What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today, I wanted to take some time out to show you what I do every day. And a part of that process is my design course mentor student reviews. So what is that? Well, over at designcourse.com, I have my UI UX course. And if you take that course, you can optionally add on at any time, you don't have to do it when you purchase, um, what's called the mentorship program. Now, throughout the course, there's a bunch of different projects that are found without that challenge you. And if you add Design Mentor on, you get to see my feedback. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I provide feedback to Design Course students. And this is, like I said, this is a process that I, I do every day. I usually tackle anywhere between 10 to 15 reviews. And I thought it'd be cool for you all to check it out in case you're interested in uh, joining the course or and or joining Mentor as well. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so let's get started here. Um, so this is the list here that I have of uh, in my back end at designcourse.com, and this is just showing uh, the people who've been waiting the longest at the top so far. Um, and then obviously down here, the last submission we have was six hours ago. So um, click review on this one. And this just gives me some basic information. I can click the reveal the user information. I can go to this particular challenge module. Um, and then here's the submission that they submitted based on the challenge uh, that they took. Now, reviewer name, I just hit load name here, give them a rating, um, a quote, and a URL. Um, the URL is like, is if I decide to provide a revision, um, and I usually do probably like 80, 75 to 80% of the time. So let's go ahead and check this one out. And this one's going to be uh, the card challenge, all right? So uh, like I mentioned, there's 12 different uh, challenges in this UI UX course, and this one has to do with uh, designing cards. And so this is kind of like the requirements. Um, each challenge has this little requirement section. So um, basically it's gonna tell you that you have to create three cards that effectively utilizes the entire frame, use the three thumbnails to the left, so on and so forth. Um, you know, they need to have a title and a button. Um, and so it's, this is what this particular person came up with. Um, I've certainly seen worse, I've seen better, um, but I could tell right off the bat that there's a couple changes that I do wanna make. Um, and I think there's a mainly an issue with visual hierarchy in this context. So um, what I'm gonna do is create a new document and just paste in theirs. And I'm going to duplicate it. So we're showing the original, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make adjustments here. So the first thing is, looking at these card designs is, notice how big the visit destination call to action button is in relation to the size of the title. I think that's a little bit mismatched. Um, the title, in most contexts, certain like hero sections, uh, should demand a little bit more uh, attention or visual hierarchy in a sense. So. Um, we're gonna bump that up because they have size 14, that's really low. I'm gonna try 22 or so, and we're also gonna make it bold. All right, there we go. So now we're getting somewhere. And I'm just gonna kind of quickly move these into place and get these aligned up pretty close. And I do think there probably needs to be a little bit more contrast. So they, they do have kind of like a this blue linear gradient occurring here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make those black practically and maybe come down on the opacity same thing with this one i don't know why there was a different one applied here but same idea all right all right so now looking at that probably need to readjust just a couple things here so if we look at the before and after they contrast more they're larger and they're bolder um 
and now it, it does seem to bring some semblance of uh, visual hierarchy back. Uh, I still think these are maybe a little bit too large, uh, especially in relation to the, the description. So I'm gonna bring those down. Unfortunately, I didn't utilize auto layout or anything like that. And I may take the fill and we'll just use a background color and it doesn't have to contrast quite so much. So now if I take the this and I auto layout it, oops. I'm gonna make sure that, oh, that's because this was all the way out. Let me just do this, there we go. Now let's auto layout it. All right, great. So now we could take this, delete that. And we also see that there was uneven white space. There was like a little bit less here. So I'm gonna move things in. There we go. Duplicate this. Duplicate that. And get everything aligned up here as much as possible. And then finally, I probably would reduce the white space here, but that's just a note I can make in the comments. So now at this point, I, what I would do is make a comment. So I'd use the comment tool, C shortcut on the keyboard, and I would just mention you know, the things they've done right and the things that they've done wrong. So in this context, I'm gonna say, um, great job here, just a few small things uh, that I've changed. I increased the size of the title, of the type rather, of the title, and increased the, the contrast behind it by making the gradient black. I also readjusted the inner white space in the white card section so that it's more consistent all around. Thanks, there we go. So now we take that, I copy that, I, I copy that comment. I'll give a rating from a scale of one to 10, although it shows a five star rating, it just gets converted. Um, for this one, I'm actually gonna give them, uh, for that design, it's, I would say 7.5, but I can't do points. So I'm, I'm gonna round it up to eight. Uh, it's definitely one of the better entries I receive sometimes. Um, and so I'm gonna hit share, copy that link, and then just submit it. And so that's what a typical review will look like. All right, let's continue on. So I'm gonna open this up. Okay, so this is a form design challenge and I see a lot of people do the same thing. So when they start this challenge, um, all it has is this ordering steps design, it has this, this panel right here, um, and then they're supposed to design all the form elements inside of it. Um, and this person did a pretty good job in several different areas, but one thing they, they, they did do that I see it's kind of common, a lot of people do, which in my opinion is wrong, is they don't extend out these, these elements right here. So they made them, um, let's see here, components. So I'm gonna detach the instance of the component and I'm going to uh, drag these out. Just gonna take these specifically, there we go. Now what size are they using for the type? Pretty small type, I'd probably bump those up respectively to um, 16 at least. All right. And I would probably also take these and make, make, maybe make them a little bit larger in terms of height. Move this down. And pretty good. They're also tasked with um, doing a focus state on these which I'm gonna be honest, I can't even tell which one would be the focus state right here. So again, they're supposed to be, uh, prototype this, so if I hit play, I can see, because I teach the prototyping part as well. Okay, so they simply made the background white, and that's fine. I think that's a good enough um, difference, so I'm not even gonna mention that. That's pretty solid. And right here, you know, I'd still probably wanna make these slightly larger. And there we go. That's a very quick example of uh, you know just some quick adjustments that can make a big difference. It's mainly not extending those uh, text fields out all the way. All right, next up, let's check this one out. 
All right, so this um, this this challenge here is just for designing a navigation. So all this stuff down here was already designed. They're instructed not to touch it. Um, and their goal is to take this and, and make a good navigation out of it. There's just really tiny details. I, they actually did a pretty good job on the navigation. Um, let me go ahead and paste this in. All right, so for this, if I double click in here, fortunately they did use um, auto layout, so I can just reduce the white space. There's a lot of white space between them, just a bit. They also had auto layout on this section, and I'm gonna hit Shift R to get the rulers out. And you know, when you have a container that's defined right here, like this white form container, you wanna make sure everything's aligned to it and doesn't extend out typically. So if I take this and we push this out right there so that the T in, uh, at the end of contact matches it, that's what we want. Uh, we could probably even reduce the amount of white space between these links even more, um, like right around there is perfect. And then we'll go ahead and increase that back. And there we go. And um, typically, I could, I also see that sometimes they'll use, let's see here, is that the exact color of this down here? I'm not sure. Uh, let me unlink that, there we go. All right, so, okay. What they did was correct. They used um, one of the colors that, that's accompanied here in this design, and they use it as their active state up here, which is great. But a lot of times, people will use this color, but they won't shade it down. They'll, they'll leave it um, this color over here. So if I hit uh, I, that's not enough contrast. So they did knowingly enough sh give, uh, push down and introduce more black into it. Um, or in shade rather, uh, and that way it does contrast properly enough. It, it's You could go darker though as well. And there you go, that's gonna be the only adjustments I make for this one. All right, next up. And typically you know, during a single session, I'll do like 10 to 15 of these. Um, so I can see, like, I even go faster when I'm not talking, um, obviously behind camera. Um, here's another one, and this is supposed to be just a really simple landing page. You need to include a headline, a subheadline, and a call to action. Do not add any more elements, uh, and you can choose to use one of the, these three images as a background. And, and so sometimes uh, people, a lot of people choose this one, um, some people choose this one, and some people choose the, av the, uh, the avocados. Um, and so this person chose the avocados, and you know what, they actually did a pretty good job. I've seen people really botch this one up. Um, there are a couple changes I wanna make though, and I'm gonna do that right now, and we'll just kinda time lapse this portion. All right, and there we go. I uh, basically I just um, I scaled down the size of these, um, and that by 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 virtue of uh, reducing the font size, it increases the amount of white space between them because there's a lacking a little bit of a white space. Um, and then I did increase the line height or the letting on this section on on the title as well, and capitalize sound because it just looks mismatched over here. Again, they did a, a very solid job overall on this particular challenge, and I'll leave a comment. <music> All right, next up. All right, so this one is a light and dark mode challenge. So by default, this one starts off uh, with this dark mode version of this kind of like a tablet sidebar navigation. And your goal as the designer is to go ahead and take this, just replicate it, and create a light mode version out of it. So you don't have to design anything, you're just sitting there and you're adjusting colors. And some people nail it, and a lot of people also don't nail it. Um, in this case, Unfortunately, they're one of the very rare few people I've ever seen do this. They changed for some reason the color of this purple card. That's one thing that's neutral that you shouldn't be adjusting. Um, they actually did a good job otherwise with this. And they, they also um, left, sometimes people will leave a comment. This one is their better version. For some reason they added just blue everywhere. 
One of the things I tell people about this challenge is, you know, if there's no color in, in certain elements, and, and really there isn't any color anywhere except for this card, don't introduce color then. Just make it uh, a grayscale, except make everything lighter. And that's what they did here, except they did change that balance card. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that for them. So I'm gonna take, uh, now sometimes people will lock the entire board. All right, let's do one more just for the fun of it. All right, so here is uh, another challenge. And this challenge, it features by default this mobile design right here. And what their goal is, is, is to take this mobile design and create a tablet variation of everything here and also a desktop variation. Um, and these are their two attempts right here. So. I actually like what they did here uh, for the most part because this is a tricky challenge for a lot of people um, and they kind of end up just making, some people make some really bad des uh, de design decisions. Um, but look how they were smart enough to take this icon here and put it above so that you could then create um, a two column approach with the increased width and the availability of the tablet. Um, and they did the same thing down here. Um, it could be a little bit better though in the desktop version, um, simply because we have a container that ends right here, but things aren't being pushed out all the way. So what I'll do is I'll take this, and they did a pretty good job on the tablet, so I'm not even gonna worry uh, about any revisions for that. All right, and there we go. Um, as, as you can see, I kind of uh, just made sure with rulers here, everything aligns up at the bottom. Uh, word wrap obviously means that there's gonna be some weight space here, but we, we at least uh, fix that issue. Uh, Shift R, now go ahead and leave a comment. All right, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you found that interesting. If you did, of course, check out designcourse.com. There's always a coupon floating around UI 2022 for 22% off. And also if you're from certain countries where the US dollar I, you know, is you know worth way more, you can also get parity pricing. Just check out the billing section of the order form. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you all soon and goodbye.